Hi guys and girls on YouTube, welcome to my channel. I've got a really quick video here to show you and I've called this the art of simple fault finding. Um, so let's take a look at this. I've got this in for repair. It's a tannoy subwoofer um, and it appears to be tripping. So um, it's plugged in, it's powered up. I'll just switch it on here and we can, ex we can have a look at the symptom. Well, actually it might help if I plugged it in over here. Right, so as you can see, we've got a red light blinking. So it appears to be tripping something on the power supplies. The output rails are pulsing because something's gone wrong. Maybe there's a short circuit on the output. So let's just turn it over. Right, so we take a look at it. We've got two separate power supplies. We've got the very high current power supply here, uh, which powers the uh, Class D audio output IC. And we've also got a little standby power supply here. Now, on here, we've got two rails. We've got zero, plus seven, and minus seven. So the first thing we want to do is we want to unplug that one there and switch it on again and see what happens. Switch it on, and as you can see, it's still tripping. So there's no short or no problem with the high current power supply. Right, so if I put my meter now on the plus seven volt supply, you can see that that supply is tripping. Now put my meter on the minus seven volt supply and you can see that's also tripping. Right, so now we need to disconnect this like that and we need to measure the voltage across here uh, and see what that is. So now with no load on here, just the meter plugged in, we do have a steady supply. Now that's only reading 6. Um, now that could be because there's a fault on the power supply or it could be um, the legend on the PCB where it says 7 volt isn't correct. So that's the plus and it's reading about 6 volts. Let's measure the minus. Right, so that's the minus. Minus seven volt and that's also reading uh, just just a little over six it's not tripping the wires uh, the probes just slipped off so we've established that this power supply is actually running now it does appear when you plug this in it starts tripping it does appear to be a short on this main board but let's do another test before we jump to any conclusions right so what we do now is with a bench power supply we apply plus seven volt to the plus seven volt rail and uh, we'll try that and then we'll put minus seven to the minus seven volt rail and see what happens right so that's seven volt on the plus seven and if you look at the bench power supply that rails only drawing 10 milliamps so it's definitely not a short on the plus seven now if we power the minus seven volt rail that's drawing no current at all so the fault's definitely not on there either so by powering these output rails with the bench power supply, we know they're not drawing any excessive current. So this isn't the problem here, the fault's on the power supply. Now, the most obvious thing on the power supply, um, we can see a brown patch there where that diode's got hot. Well, we know that diode isn't faulty because we can actually measure um, just over six volt on this pin when it's no load. So the assumption is, this power supply part, the standby power supply, can't take a load. Um, so what are the suspects on here? Well, the obvious ones um, are these four capacitors on the output. Probably one of these is faulty. That would be the most likeliest cause. So let's just whip this board out and let's just test these caps. So as you can see, these caps show no sign of distress. But out of the four which one do you think is the most likely suspect well i think it's the one on the plus seven volt rail um, because that's obviously where the highest current's drawn uh, because there's a brown patch where that diode is um, and it's going to be the cap straight after the diode which is the reservoir capacitor um, so i think it's going to be this one here out of the three i think it's going to be that one that's a faulty one so let's just whip that out Right, let's just whip the said cap out. Let's 
and there we go let's just test that now right so it should be a 220 mic at 16 volt 105 degrees and as you can see there it's equivalent series resistance 12.4 ohm uh, the capacitance is 141 ohms that is definitely faulty right so as you can see I've just replaced that one cap there let's plug it in switch on see what happens and I am of course holding the camera at the same time as doing this uh, where's the standby light there switch on and as you can see we've got a steady light that's the fault cured so as you can see we've just changed one cap and that's cured the fault but now I'm thinking if we look at this cap it actually looks brand new um, there's nothing wrong with it it's not gassed up with hydrogen gas because the top's absolutely flat um, so the reason this has failed is obviously a nondescript very poor quality cap so now I'm thinking even though we've cured the fault um, there's one two three four other caps there of exactly the same brand the sensible thing to do is even though we found just the one that's faulty is replace all four with the uh, better quality ones now what i use is um these panasonic caps I've, I've found these panasonic caps are the most reliable caps i've ever come across and this is my first choice for replacing capacitors so uh, even though We've narrowed it down to exactly the same, what exactly the right one that's faulty. Let's just change them all and take these out and check the values of these as well. Right, so this is one of the 100 mic smoothing capacitors. Uh, as you can see, that's all right. Let's just stop and test the other one. This is the other one. And as you can see... Um, that's okay the impedance one ohm is a little bit high but that's still okay and the other reservoir capacitor uh, 199 the value is a little bit down but 0 0.9 ohm impedance that, that's still okay that one to cause a problem cap which should be 100 at 25 um, the values fall and, and the impedance is also quite high uh, but that wouldn't have caused the problem um, because uh, the one that we put in cured the fault but as you can see none of these caps show any sign of gassing up so even though we found the right one uh, I've taken the decision to change them all because they're obviously poor quality crap uh, used in the most important part of the circuit so there we go, I'm replacing all of the caps on the output of the power supply uh, with the Panasonic FC series which I've found to be one of the most reliable caps in existence. Right, so that's the five new caps in. There's just one little job to do before we test it and uh, if you notice there, there's a hot spot. That's the, um, that's the resistor for the snubber network on the uh, high current output uh, and it looks a bit brown so what we'll do is we'll just retouch that and then uh, we'll test it oh I'll do the snubber capacitor as well uh, it's not causing a problem but just a little bit of fresh solder on that and uh, that means we won't have a dry joint later on so the caps are in the boards are cleaned up let's plug it in right so we've got five new caps let's power it up that's the standby light there as you can see powers up perfectly right it's all back together in its case So there we go guys and girls, that is the art of simple fault finding. Okay, 
many thanks for watching my channel and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.